Hi guys, welcome back to another exciting tutorial of Create Stack. In this tutorial, we will learn how to make a YouTube clone website using React.js. Now, you might be wondering why a YouTube clone? Well, building a clone of popular platform like YouTube is a fantastic way to sharpen your skill as a web developer. It allows you to learn how to implement key features of a complex web application. In this tutorial, we will cover everything from the setting up our development environment to building a responsive user interface, creating YouTube data API links, and display real-time YouTube data and videos on our YouTube clone website. So let's see the project overview that we are going to create in this tutorial. So this is our YouTube clone website where you can see this navigation bar where we have the logo one search box and some icons in the right side of this navigation bar. Then we have the left side bar where you can see different categories and subscribed channel list. And here we have the video list. These video lists are coming from the YouTube API. Here it is displaying the video list of all the categories. And from the left side, if I select the gaming category, it will display the video from the gaming category only. Then if I click on sports, it will display videos related to the sports category. Let's click on the music. Now it is displaying videos related to the music category. Let's click on home. Now again it will display the videos from all the categories. We can click on these video thumbnails. So it will open the video play page. If I open this video, you can see this video will start playing automatically. And here we have the video title, number of views, upload time, then number of likes. Here we have the channel name and channel subscriber. And here we have the video description. After that, you can see all the comments on this video. In the right side, you can see the recommended videos. And if I click on this recommended video, it will start playing that particular video. You can see it opens that video and here we have the video information like title, number of views and channel name. Let's open the home page again. And here we have the toggle menu. Let me click here. So it will collapse the sidebar. You can see in the sidebar. Now we have only icons. And if I click again, it will expand the sidebar. So we can see the icon and text also. This YouTube clone website is completely responsive for a small devices. Let's open it in a small screen. So you can see how it will display in the mobile phone devices. So it is completely responsive for small screen devices. This is the home page. And let me click on this video thumbnail. So it will open the video page. So this is how this video page is displaying in a small screen. It is also responsive. Here we have the video, then video information, then comments. And at the end, we have the recommended videos. After creating this YouTube clone, you can deploy it online for free. And you will get the project live link that you can add in your resume or online portfolio. It will add more values in your resume and help you to get the web development job. By the way, I have already uploaded it using Vercel. You can find this link in the video description. If you want to learn how to deploy your project online, then let me know in the comment section. I will make a separate tutorial for that. Also, if you are absolute beginner in React.js, then I will highly recommend you to watch my complete JavaScript course where I have explained all the JavaScript concepts that are required to learn React.js. I will provide the link in the description. So if you are ready to level up your React.js skills, make sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe and let's get started. Let's come to desktop screen. And here first we will create the React project. For that we will open terminal. So right click and open in terminal. And in this terminal we will type npm create wheat latest. After that, we will provide the name for our project that will be 
YouTube clone. And here we will select the framework React, then select JavaScript. Here you can see our project folder has been created. So let's close this terminal and open this folder with VS Code Editor. So I will right click here, show more option, then open with code. Now this VS Code Editor is open. Here we will open the integrated terminal. And here we will install some packages. So to install the packages, we will type npm install and the first package will be react router dom. Press enter. After installing this package, next we will install one more package. So we will type npm install and the package name is moment, then press enter. Here we have installed two packages, react router dom and moment package. We will use these packages in our YouTube clone application. Now we will run our react project. To run the react project, here we will use the command npm run dev. Now our project is successfully running. Let's open this address in the browser. So here our react project is running successfully in this web browser. Now we have to clean this default project. For that we will come back to VS Code Editor and we will open the src folder then open this app.jsx file and clear it. And here we will use RAFCE. After adding this, our app component will be clear. After that, we will delete the app.css file. Then we will open index.css file. And here we will clear all the codes. And save the file. Now we will open this index.html file. And in this title, we will update the text. So let's type YouTube clone and save the changes. Now open this assets folder and here we have the react.svg file. Delete this one. Now the react project is clean. Now we will come back to the web browser. You can see this web page is completely blank. And here the title is YouTube clone. After that, we will add the assets in this assets folder. So on my desktop screen, I have added this folder assets where we have some images and icons that I will be using on this project. So let's copy all the images, open this project folder. Here we will go to src and assets and paste all the images. You can find all these assets download link in the video description. Now we will close it and we will open the VS code editor. In this assets folder, you can see we have all the images. Now we will create the folder structure for our YouTube clone. So in this src folder, we will create a new folder and the folder name will be pages. Here we will create two pages that will be home page and the video player page. So to create two pages, we will create two other folder in this pages folder. So let's create a new folder with the name home. And in this pages folder, we will create another folder with the name video. Here we have created 
two folders for two pages. In home folder, we will create a new file and we will add the file name home.jsx. And here we will use RAFCE. For this page, we will create one CSS file. So in this home folder, we will create a new file and the file name will be home.css. Now we have to link this CSS file with this JSX file. So here we will add the import statement. Just type import, then dot slash home.css. Now the CSS file is linked with home page. Similarly, we will create files in this video folder. So in this video folder, we will create the first file with the name video.jsx. Here we will use RAFCE. And for this page, we will create one CSS file. So in this video folder, we will create a new file that is video.css and import this CSS file with this JSX file. So here we will type import dot slash video dot CSS. Now we will save this file. So in this pages folder, we have the home page and video page. After that, in this SRC folder, we will create a new folder and the folder name will be components. In this components folder, we will create multiple components like sidebar, navbar, recommended video section and the video player section. After that, in this component folder, let's create a folder and the folder name will be navbar. And in this navbar folder, we will create a new file and the file name will be navbar.jsx. Here we will use RAFCE. And for this navbar component, we will create the CSS file. So in this navbar folder, we will create a new file and the file name will be navbar.css. Now we have to import this CSS file in this navbar component. Here we will use import dot slash navbar dot CSS. So we have created the navbar component. Now we have to map this navbar component in the app component. So in this app dot JSX file, we will type navbar select it from this snippet from this components folder and close this tag after adding this this navbar component file will be imported automatically now we have mounted this navbar component after that, we will add the HTML structure in this navbar component. So we will open navbar.jsx file. Here we will update this tag. Instead of this div, we will use nav tag. And in this nav, we will provide one class name. So let's add the class name. Flex div. Inside this nav tag, we will create one div. And in this div, we will provide one class name nav left. And with this, we will add one more class name that is flex div. Inside this div, we will create one img tag, and in this image tag, we will add the menu icon. For that, we have to import the menu icon. So here we will use the import statement, import menu icon from 
assets folder slash menu dot png now we can provide this menu icon in this src so let's add curly braces and type menu icon after this img tag we will create one more image tag and here we will provide the logo so first we have to import that logo so we will use import a statement logo from assets folder and slash the file name that is logo.png now in this src we can provide that logo we will just add curly braces and logo now in this first image we will add the class name that will be menu icon and in the second one we will add the class name that will be logo after this div we will create another div and the class name will be nav middle in this class name we will add one more class name that is flex div and in this one we will insert one input tag here we will provide the input type text and the placeholder will be search after this input field we will add one image tag and in this image src we have to provide the search icon so import the search icon here just add import search icon from assets folder slash search dot png and here in this src we will provide search icon after this we will create another div and the class name will be nav right so we will add div nav right and in this div we will add one more class name that is flex div here we will use for img tag so just add img into for in these img tag we will provide the upload icon mode icon notification icon and profile icon for that we will import these images so here we will add the import statement upload icon from assets folder slash upload dot png after that we will import the mode icon from assets folder slash more dot png after that we will import the notification icon from assets folder slash notification dot png after that we will import the profile icon so we will type import and profile icon from assets folder slash jack dot png now save the changes and we will use these icons in this images tag so in the first one we will provide upload icon in the second one we will use mode icon in the third image tag we will use notification icon and in the fourth image we will use profile icon after that in this profile icon we will add one class name that is user icon 
After that, we will save the file and we will come back to the web browser. So on this web page, you can see we have the menu icon, logo, search box and other images. Now we will add the CSS properties for this navigation bar. So first we will open this index.css file and here we will add some CSS properties for complete project. So for each element we will provide margin 0, padding 0, box sizing, border box. Then we will add the font family. It will be sans serif. After that we will add the CSS properties for A tag. So for this A we will add text decoration, none. And after that we will add color. And we will add this color code. After that we will add the property for image tag. So for this image we will provide cursor pointer. After that we will add the CSS properties for the flex div class name. So let's add dot flex div. And in this one we will provide display flex, align item center. So here we have added some global CSS properties. Now save this file. Now we'll add the CSS properties for this navigation bar. So let's open this navbar.css file and let's copy the class name from this navbar.jsx file. So we will use this nav tag. So write this nav tag here in this CSS file and for this nav tag we will add these CSS properties. We have provided padding, then box shadow, then position sticky, top zero and z index. So that this nav bar will be on top when we scroll the web page. Now we will add the CSS properties for this menu icon. So here we will type dot nav left dot menu icon and here we will provide the width and margin from the right. After that we will add the CSS for this logo. So here we will type dot nav left dot logo. For this logo we will provide width. After that in this nav middle, we will create one div and we will provide one class name search box and in this search box we will add one more class name that is flex div and in this div we will place these input tag and img tag. Next we will add the CSS properties for this search box class name. So in this CSS file we will type dot nav middle dot search box. Here we will provide the border, margin right, padding and border radius. After that in the left side we have the menu icon and logo and here we have the search box and in the right side we have some features icon and profile icon. After that we will add the CSS properties for this input field. So here we will type dot nav middle dot search box space input tag and in this one we will provide the width border outline and background transparent 
now the background is transparent for this input field now we will add the css properties for this search icon so here we will type dot nav middle dot search box then img tag and here we will provide width 15 pixel now the search icon is looking good after that we will add the css properties for the images which is in the right side of this navigation bar so here we will type dot nav right img tag here we will provide the width and margin from the right side save the changes now the images in the right side has become small now we will add the css properties for this profile icon so here we will type dot nav right dot user icon here we will provide the width and border radius 50 percent so that it will be circular now we will open the web page now this navbar component is completely ready now we will create the sidebar component to create the sidebar in this components folder we will create a new folder and let's add the folder name sidebar in this folder we will create a new file and the file name will be sidebar.jsx here we will use rafc snippet now for this component we will create one css file so in this sidebar folder we will create a new file and the file name will be sidebar.css now import this css file in this sidebar component so here we will type import dot slash sidebar dot css now save this file we will use this sidebar component on our home page for that first we will mount this home page and video page on our app component using the react router to implement the react router in our project we will use main.jsx file and here we will use browser router tag here we will type opening arrow browser router and in this browser router we will insert this app component now we have the support of react router in this app component let's open this app.jsx file and after this navbar we will create the routes to create the route we will use the opening arrow routes tag that is from react router dom and within this routes tag we will create the routes so first we will create the route for our home page here we will use opening arrow route tag then path property the path will be slash and in this path we will mount the element that will be home page here we will add opening arrow home slash closing arrow now just close this route tag also now we have created one route for our home page that will be mounted on slash path after that we will create the route for the video page so here we will use opening arrow and here we will add route path in this path we will provide slash video slash and here we will use the parameters so we will use colon and here we will provide the category id then we will provide one more slash and here we will use one more parameter that will be video id 
So after this colon, we will add video ID. And on this path, we will mount the element that will be our video page. So just add video slash closing arrow. Now close this route. So we have created routes for the home page and video page. Now in this home page, we will mount the sidebar component. So we will open home.jsx file and here remove this div and here we will use the fragment and in this fragment we will mount the sidebar component. For that here we will add opening arrow sidebar slash closing arrow. Now we have mounted this sidebar. Now we will design the sidebar HTML structure. So first we will import all the images used in this sidebar component. So here first we will import home image, then game icon, then automobiles image, sports image, entertainment image, tech image, music image, blogs image, news image, Jack image, Simon image, Tom image, Megan image, Cameron image. Here we have imported all the images and icons. Now we will add the HTML elements for the sidebar component. So first in this div we will add one class name. And in this class name, let's add sidebar. After adding the sidebar class name, within this div, we will create one div and the class name will be shortcut links. In this div, we will create one div tag and in this one, we will provide the class name site links. So here we will type div dot site links. In this div, we will insert one image tag. And in this image tag, we will provide home image. After that, we will add one paragraph tag. And in this P tag, we will add home. After that, let's create the copy of this side link. We will create total eight copy. So just copy and paste. After that, we will add one HR tag. So in the first one, we have the home icon and the P tag is home. After that, we will update the image. It is game icon. And here we will add the text in P tag that is gaming. Similarly, we will update the next image that is automobiles. And in this P, we will update the text automobiles. Then we will insert the sports image. And here also we will type sports. Here we will insert the entertainment image. And here we will add the text entertainment. Then we will use the new image that is tech. And here in this P tag, we will add technology. Then we will provide the music image. And in this P tag, we will provide music. Then in this image tag, we will provide blocks. And in this P tag, we will type blogs. In the last one, we will add news image. And in the P tag, we will add news. After that, save the changes. And you can see all these icons and text in the left side. We have all the images, home, gaming, automobile, 
स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट टेक्नोलॉजी म्यूजिक एंड ब्लॉग्स एंड न्यूज आफ्टर दिस डिव विल क्रिएट वन मोर डिव एंड वी विल प्रोवाइड द क्लास नेम सब्सक्राइब्ड लिस्ट इन दिस डिव फर्स्ट वी विल यूज वन एस थ्री टैग एंड हेयर वी विल एड द टेक्स्ट दैट इज सब्सक्राइब्ड After this S3 tag, we will add one div, and the class name will be side link. In this div, we will add one img tag, and in this src, we will add profile image, that is Jack, that we have imported from the assets folder. And after this image tag, we will add one p tag. and here we will type pudi pi now we will create the copy of this div so just copy and paste it now we will update the image so let's add the image simon and here we will add the text mr beast in the third image we will add tom and here we will add the text justin bieber then we will add another image megan and here we will add the text 5 minutes craft after that we will add another image and here in this p tag we will add nas delhi now save the changes and come back to the web page so in the left side we have the icons and after that we have the profile images and name now we will add the css properties for the sidebar component so first we will add the css property for this sidebar class name so let's copy it and come to sidebar.css file paste this class name here and here we will add the css properties background width height position fixed and padding from the left side and padding from the top save the changes and come back to the web page now it will be fixed in the left side now we will add the css properties for these images so let's use this class name shortcut links and paste it here and here we will type img tag here we will provide width and margin from the right side save the changes now come back to the web page so you can see the width for these icons has been updated after that we will add the css properties for this side link class name so let's copy it add it here here we will provide display align items margin from the bottom then width flex wrap and cursor pointer now come back to the web page so you can see the alignment for these category links are looking good now we will add the css properties for the hr tag so here we will type dot sidebar hr tag here we will provide border 0 height background and width now save the changes now this hr tag is ready now we will add the css properties for this s3 tag so here we will copy this class name subscribed list add it here in this css file and here we will provide s3 tag for this one we will provide font size margin and color now this text is ready 
After that, we will add the CSS properties for this profile images. So here we will type dot subscribed list img tag. Here we will provide the CSS properties width, border radius and margin from the right side. Save the changes. Now you can see the width has been updated for this profile icon. Now this complete sidebar is ready. Now we will add the functionality on this menu icon. When we will click here, it will collapse the sidebar and display only icons. And when we click again, it will expand the sidebar and we will see the icon and text. To create this feature, let's come back to the VS Code editor and we will open app.jsx file. Before this return statement, we will create one state variable. So to create the state variable, we will use const sidebar and the setter function name will be set sidebar equal to use state and initialize it with true. Now we have to send this sidebar in this home using the props. So here in this home we will type sidebar equal to sidebar and send this set sidebar function in this navbar. So here we will type set sidebar equal to set sidebar. Now we will open this navbar component and here we will get that set sidebar function and we will use this set sidebar function in this menu icon. So on this menu icon, we will add on click property. And in this one, we will pass one arrow function. And here we will use set sidebar function. And in this one, first we will get the previous state. And here we will use the ternary operator. So if the previous state is false, then it will make it true. So we will add question mark true. And if it is not false, then it will become false. So this ternary operator will work as a toggle function. If the sidebar is true, it will become false. And if it is false, it will become true. Now save this component and we will open this home.jsx file. And here we will destructure the sidebar. So let's add sidebar. And we will pass this sidebar state in this sidebar component using the props. So we will type sidebar equal to sidebar. Now we will get the access of the sidebar in the sidebar.jsx file. So open this file sidebar.jsx and here we will destructure the sidebar. So we have added this sidebar state. Now we will use this sidebar state in this class name to provide the dynamic class name. To provide the dynamic class name, we will add it in the curly braces and here we will use the backticks. And after this sidebar class name, we will use the template literal. So let's add dollar sign curly braces. And in this one, we will check if the sidebar is true. In that case, we will provide empty string. And if it is false, in that case, we will provide a string that will be a new class name. So let's add 
small sidebar now save the changes now we'll come back to the web page and right click and click on inspect Here we have the sidebar and if I click on this menu icon, here we have sidebar and a small sidebar. Now using this a small sidebar class, we will hide these text and we will make this sidebar small. So let's come back to the VS code editor and open this sidebar.css file. Here first we will add that class name small sidebar. And here we will provide the width of 5%. Now save the changes. And if I click here, you can see the width is changing. Width becomes 5%. After that, we have to hide these text. To hide that one, here we will add dot small sidebar, then p tag. And here we will provide display none. Save the changes. So here you can see all text are hidden. We have only icons and image. And if I click again on this menu icon, the text will be visible. If I click again, it will hide the text. After that, we will hide this text also in the small sidebar. So let's come back to VS Code Editor. And here we will type dot a small sidebar h3 tag. And here also we will provide display none. So that subscribed text is also hidden. If I click here, it will display this subscribed text again. Now we will add the CSS properties for this hr tag. So let's add dot a small sidebar hr. And in this one, we will provide width and margin from the bottom. Then save the changes and come back to the web page. So here, if I click on this menu icon, we have the expanded sidebar. If I click again, we have the small sidebar where we have the icons and profile images. After that, we will create the multiple video cards on this web page. To create that, we will come back to the VS Code editor. In this components folder, we will create a new folder and the name will be feed. In this folder, we will create a new file and the name will be feed.jsx. Here we will use RAFCE. For this component, we will create one CSS file. So in this feeds folder, we will create a new file and the file name will be feed.css. Now we have to import this CSS file in this JSX file. So in this feed.jsx file, we will add import dot slash feed.css. Save the changes. Now we have to mount this component on our home page. So let's open home.jsx file and after this sidebar, we will create one div. And in this one, we will provide one class name. And here we will use the dynamic class name. So let's add the curly braces, backticks. And in this backtick, we will add container. And after that, we will use the template literal. So let's add dollar sign curly braces. And in this one, we will use the ternary operator. So first, we will check the sidebar if it is true. In that case, we will provide one empty string. And if it is false, in that case, we will provide one new class name that is large container.
In this div, we will mount our feed component. So here we will type opening arrow feed slash closing arrow. So this feed component has been mounted in this div where we have the container class and if the side word is false, in that case, there will be one more class name large container. Now we will add the HTML elements in this feed component. So first we will import the images that I will be using in this component. We will import the images from the assets folder. So let's type import thumbnail from assets thumbnail.png. We have imported total 8 thumbnails from 1 to 8 from the assets folder. After that we will add the HTML structure for this feed component. So in this div let's add a class name that is card. So we will add class name card. After that we will add one img tag. In this image we will use the image that we have imported. So let's use the first image thumbnail one. Then we will create one h2 tag and in this one we will display the video title. So let's add one common title. Then we will add one s3 tag. In this one we will provide the channel name. So here we will type great stack. After that we will create one p tag. In this p tag we will display total views and upload time. So let's add 15k views. Then we will use one dot. So here we will add and bullet semicolon. Then we will add two days ago. So here we have created the format for the card. Now come back to the web page. It is looking like this. So first in this return we will create one div and the class name will be feed. And let's place this card inside this feed. After that let's create another copy of this card. So we will create total 8 card. So we have created total 8 cards. Now in the second one we will provide thumbnail 2, thumbnail 3, then thumbnail 4, then it is 5, it is 6, it is 7 and the last one is thumbnail 8. So we have created total 8 card with 8 image. So here we have multiple cards. Now we will add the CSS properties for this feed component. So first we will add the CSS properties for this feed class name. So let's copy it and come to feed.css file, write this class name here and here we will provide display grid, grid template columns. Here we will add repeat auto fit, min max 250 pixel and one fraction. After that we will add grid column gap, grid row gap and margin from the top. Let's come back to the web browser. So here it is looking like this. So to fix this let's come back and in this home.jsx file here we have the container. So for this container we will add the CSS properties. So we will open home.css file and here we will type dot container class name and here we will add the properties background and padding from the left, right, top and bottom. Then we will add the CSS properties for this large container. So let's copy this and 
paste it here in this home.css file. And here we will add padding from the left, 7%, that's it. Save this file and come back to the web browser. Now this feed is looking like this and if I click on this menu icon, it will increase the width of this feed area because it is reducing the padding from the left. And if I click again, it will increase the padding from the left side and it will become small. Now we will add the CSS properties for these images. So let's open the feed.css file and here we will add the class name dot card then img tag for this image we will provide width and border radius save the changes so now you can see the thumbnail size is perfect and we have the border radius also for this image now we will add the css properties for this title so here we will type dot card then h2 tag where we have added the video title and here we will provide the font size font weight then color and margin now the size for this video title is good after that we will add the css properties for the channel name so here we will type dot card h3 tag and here we will provide font size font weight color and margin save the changes so now this channel title is also looking good after that we will add the css properties for this text that display the number of views and upload time so let's add dot card then p tag and for this p let's provide font size of 14 pixel save the changes now let's come back to the web page and you can see this card is looking perfect now we will duplicate all the content in this card so that we will get more thumbnails so let's come back to the feed.jsx file and select all these card copy and paste again so now it will display total 16 cards and we can scroll this web page so when we are scrolling this you can see the navigation bar is fixed at the top and if i click on this menu icon it will increase the width of this feed area and if i click again it will decrease the width now we will create our video page to create the video page let's come back to the vs code editor in this feed.jsx file in the first card we will replace this div with link tag this link tag is from react router dom in this link tag we will use two property in this two property we will add the path of our video page so in this curly braces we will use the template literals so let's add backticks then we will go to video path slash category id so let's add the random category id 20 let's add slash and here we will add the video id so for this video id let's add any random id for now and after that save the changes Now if I click on the first card, it will open the video page where you can see we have the navigation bar and this is the path slash video slash category id slash video id. Now we will add the elements on this video page. So let's come back to the VS code editor and open this video.jsx file. In this div we will add one class name property and here we will add the class name play container
Now we will create one component play video and we will mount it in the video page. So in this component folder, let's create a new folder and the name will be play video. In this folder, we will create one JSX file that is play video dot JSX. And here we will use RAFC snippet. For this component, we will create one CSS file. So in this play video folder, we will create a new file. And let's add the file name playvideo.css. Now we will mount this CSS file in this JSX file. So we will add import dot slash playvideo.css. Here we have created the play video component. Now we have to mount this component in the video page. So in this div we will add play video component. After that we will design this component. So let's open playvideo.jsx file. Now in this component we will import the images and videos from our asset folder. So first we will import one video file, then we will import the like image, dislike image, share image, save image, then jack image, then user profile image. Now we have imported all the images and video. Now we will add the HTML elements. So in this div we will add one class name property. And here we will provide the class name play video. Here we will provide one video tag. In this SRC, we will add the video one that we have imported. So let's add curly braces video one. Now save the changes. So on this screen, here we have one video. This video is not playing. To play this, let's come back to the code file and in this video tag, we will use controls attribute, then we will add auto play attribute, then we will add muted. Now we will open the browser. Now if I reload the web page, you can see this video is played automatically and here we have the control buttons to play or pause the video. After this video, here we will add one S3 tag and here we will paste one video title. So the title is best YouTube channel to learn web development. After that we will create one div and here we will provide the class name play video info. In this div we will create one paragraph tag. So here we will use the paragraph tag and in this p we will type some numbers that is number of views then we will add one dot and after this dot we will add two days ago after this p tag we will create one div in this div we will show likes dislikes and share and save so we will use the span tag and in this span we will use the img tag and in this image src we will provide the like image. After this image tag we will add 125. Now let's create the copy of this span. 
So we will add total 4 span. In the second image we will add dislike and here we will add the data 2. Similarly we will update the image for the third one it is shared image and here we will add the text share and in the last image we will add save and here we will add the text save. Now save the changes and come back to the web page. Now here we have the video title views and upload time. Then we have the like button, dislike button and shared icon then save icon. After that we will display the channel details. So after this div we will create one hr tag. After this hr we will create one div with the class name publisher. Within this div first we will insert one image tag and here we will use the jack image. After this image we will create one div tag and in this div we will display the p tag and in this p tag we will add the text that will be channel name. So let's add greatest tag. After that here we will add the subscribers detail. So we will use the span tag and in this span tag we will type 1 million subscribers. After closing of this div we will create one button tag that will be the subscribe button. So let's add the button tag and here we will add the button text that is subscribe. Now save the changes. So here we have the image, channel name, number of subscribers and subscribe button. After that we will add the description section. To create the description section. After closing of this div, here we will add one div and we will provide the class name with description that is video description. In this one we will insert the p tag and here we will add some text channel that makes learning easy and let's add another p tag and here we will add the text subscribe great stack to watch more tutorials on web development. After that we will add one hr tag then we will add one h4 tag. In this h4 tag we will mention total number of comments. So let's add 130 comments. Then save the changes and come back to the web browser. So here we have description text then horizontal line and comment count. After that we will create some comments. To create the comment after this h4 tag we will create one div and the class name will be comment. In this div first we will insert one image tag. So let's add the curly braces in this src and we will provide the user profile image. After this image we will provide one div and in this div we will provide one s3 tag and here we will type username. This is the name of the channel user who has commented on this video. So let's add any name Jack Nicholson. Then we will add one span tag and in this one we will mention the time. So let's add one day ago. After this s3 tag 
we will insert the p tag and in this p tag we will provide the content that user has commented so let's paste this text after this comment we will add one div with the class name comment action In this comment action div, we will add the like and dislike icon. For that, here we will use one image tag. And here we will provide like image. Then we will add one span tag. And here we will provide some number 244. After this span, we will insert one image tag and here we will use dislike image. After that, we will create a copy of this comment div. Now save the changes and come back to the web browser. So here we have multiple comments. We have the name then time one day ago then comment text now we will add the css properties for this play video component so first we will add the css properties for this class name play video so let's copy this one and paste it here in this play video dot css file Here we will provide flex basis 69% and save the changes. After that we will add the CSS properties for this video tag. So here we will type dot play video video and here we will add width 100% save the changes. Now we have provided the width 100% for this video. Now we will add the CSS properties for this S3 tag. So here we will type dot play video S3 tag. And here we will provide margin from the top then font weight and font size. After that we will add the CSS properties for the play video info class name so let's copy this class name add it here in the css file and here we will provide display align items justify content then flex wrap some margin from top and font size and color then save the changes and come back to the web page now this views and time is in the left side and these action icons are on the right side which is like dislike after that we will add the properties for this image icons so let's add dot play video info img tag and for these images we will provide the width and margin from the right side Save the changes. Now these icon size is perfect. Next we will add the properties for this. A span tag. So here we will type dot play video info a span tag. And here we will provide display align items and margin left. Now this text and uh, images are in line. Next we will add the CSS properties for this HR tag. So here we will type dot play video HR tag. For this HR tag we will provide border, height, background and margin. Now this HR tag is also looking good.
Next, we'll add the CSS properties for this publisher. So here we will copy this class name publisher and paste it in this CSS file. Here we will add display, align items and margin from the top and save the changes. Now this image in the left side and in the right side we have the channel name, number of subscribers and subscribe button. After that. We will add the CSS properties for this div. So here we will type dot publisher div tag. For this div we will provide flex and line height. Now we have the publisher image then publisher detail and this subscribe button is in the right side. After that we will add the CSS properties for this image. So here we will add dot publisher, then img and for this image we will provide width, border radius and margin from the right side. Now the channel logo is looking good and it is circular. After that we will add the CSS properties for this p tag so here we will type dot publisher div p tag for this p let's add color font weight and font size now this channel name is in bold font now we will add the css properties for this span tag where we have added the number of subscribers so we will add dot publisher div and a span. For this a span we will provide font and color. So we have decreased the font size of this text. Now this subscriber count is looking good. Next we will add the CSS properties for this subscribe button which is in the right side. So here we will add dot publisher and button tag. In this button tag, we will provide background, then color, then padding, border outline 0, border radius and cursor. Cursor will be pointer. Save these changes and come back to the web browser so you can see this subscribe button is looking good. Now we will add the CSS properties for this description text. So we will copy this class name with description and paste it here in this CSS file. Here we will provide padding from the left side then margin. Now we have added some space in the left side for this description. Next we will add the CSS properties for this text which is in the description. So here we will add dot with description then p tag and here we will provide font size, margin from the bottom and color. So the font size for this description text is looking good. After that we will add the CSS properties for this comment text which is in the h4 tag. So here we will type dot with description then h4 tag. Here we will provide font size, color and margin from top. Now this comment count is looking good. After that we will add the CSS properties for this comments. So Let's add the class name dot comment and here we will provide display, align items and margin. Now in the left side we have the image and in the right side we have the comment content. Now we will add the CSS properties for this image tag. 
So here we will add dot comment and img tag. For this img tag, we will provide width, border radius and margin from the right side. Save the changes. Now this image is looking good. After that we will add the CSS properties for this S3 tag. So here we will type dot comment S3 tag and here we will provide font size and margin from the bottom. Then save the changes. After that we will add the CSS properties for this a span tag where we have added the comment time. So let's add dot comment S3 and a span. For this a span we will apply font size, color, font weight and margin from left. Now the size for this time has been reduced. After that we will add the CSS properties for this comment action class name. So just copy this, paste it here. For this comment action we will provide display, align items, margin and font size. After that we will add the CSS properties for these like and dislike icons. So here we will add dot comment action then img tag. Here we will provide border radius 0, width and margin from the right side. Now these like and dislike icons are looking good. After that we will add the CSS property for this span tag. So here we will type dot comment action then the span tag and here we will provide margin from the right and color. Then save the changes. So here we have added some space after this number of likes. Now this play video complaint is ready. Next we have to add the CSS properties in this video page. So here we have added one class name play container. So we will add this class name in the CSS file to add the CSS properties. So just copy this and add it here in this video.css file. Here we will provide the background padding from the left, right, top and bottom. Then display, justify content and flex wrap. Save the changes and come back to the web page. Now display video component is displaying in the left side and it is using the width of 65%. Now in the right side we will add a sidebar where we will display the recommended videos. So let's come back and in this components folder we will create a new folder and provide the folder name recommended. Now in this recommended folder we will create one JSX file and CSS file. So let's create the first file recommended.jsx and we will create another file recommended.css. Now open this recommended.jsx file. Here we will use RAFCE and here we will import this CSS file. So we will add import dot slash recommended dot css so here we have created one component with the name recommended and now we have to mount this component in the video page so open video dot jsx file in this play container after this play video component we will add the recommended component close this tag after that we will add the HTML elements in this recommended component. So first we will import all the images that will be used in this recommended component. So we will import the thumbnails from assets folder. 
so we have imported the eight images now in this div we will add a class name so let's add the class name recommended now within this div we will create one div and the class name will be side video list in this div we will insert one image tag and in this image src we will use the image that we have imported so let's use the first image thumbnail one after that we will add the div and in this div we will add the class name vid info in this div we will insert the h4 tag and in this h4 tag we will use video title so let's use one title best channel that helps you to be a web developer after that we will add a text in p tag where we will display the channel name so let's add greatest tag after that we will add one more p tag and here we will display the total views so let's add 199k views after that save the changes and we will come back to the web browser I scroll the web page and you can see this thumbnail image and then we have the title channel name and number of views now we will add the multiple copies of this side video list so let's select this div and copy and paste it multiple times now we'll update the images so it will be thumbnail 2 3 4 it is 5 then 6 7 and this is thumbnail 8 now save the changes and come back to the web browser so here we have total 8 images now we will add the css properties for this recommended component so first we will add the css properties for this class name recommended so just copy this class name add it here in this file recommended.css in the play video we have added the flex basis 69 percent now we have the 30 percent remaining area in that one we will display our recommended videos so let's come back and here we will add flex basis 30 percent and save the changes after providing the flex basis next we will add the css properties for this side video list class name so we will copy this and paste it here for this side video list let's add display justify content and margin from bottom after that we will add the css properties for this image tag so again we will use the same class name dot side video list then img tag so for this image let's add css property flex basis 49 percent and width 50 percent then save the changes and open the web browser so here in the right side we have the video thumbnail and video title channel name and number of views after that we will add the css properties for this vid info copy this vid info paste it here here also we will provide flex basis 49 percent now we will add the css properties for this h4 tag so let's add dot with info h4 tag and here we will provide font size and margin from bottom now our recommended section is complete and this complete video page is looking good now let's open our home page 
Now the front end of our YouTube clone is ready. This is our home page and if I click on this thumbnail, it will open the video page. Next, we will integrate the YouTube API using that we will update this data. These data will be coming from the API. So first we will create one API key. To create the API key, we will open new tab and here we will search for YouTube data API key. Open this link. We already have a Google account. We will go to Google developers console using this link. Open this link in new tab. Then click on this button, create project. Here we will add a project name, YouTube clone. Then click on this create button. Now our project has been created. Now we will click on enable APIs and services. And here in this search box, we will type YouTube data API version three. Open this one. Now click on enable button. Now we have enabled the YouTube data API version three. Then click on create credentials. And here we will select the API YouTube data API version three. After that, we'll click on this public data, then click on next. So here we have one API key. Let's copy this API key. Click on this done button. Now we will come back to the VS code editor. In this SRC folder, we will create a new file and the file name will be data.js. In this file, we will create one variable. So let's add const API key equal to and here we will paste our API key. After that, we will export this API key so that we can use this API key in any component. After exporting this API key, we will come back to the web browser and here we will search for YouTube data API, open this website, then click on references. And here we have this section in the sidebar using that we can access the YouTube's data. So first we need the data for the home page of our YouTube clone. To make this YouTube clone functional, we have to display this card data using the API. So let's open the VS code editor and we will open home.jsx file. And here, before this return a statement, we will add one state variable. To create the state variable, we will add const category and the setter function name will be set category equal to user state. And we will initialize it with zero. After that, we will pass this category and set category in this sidebar using props. So let's add category equal to curly braces category. Then we will pass the setter function set category equal to set category. 
after that in this feed component also we will pass the props so in this one we will pass the category and here we will pass the category using the category props we can change this data when we click on the home it should display the mixed content if i click on the gaming it should display the gaming videos from the api for that we will use this category state so first we will make this sidebar so let's come to sidebar.jsx file here first we will destructure the props so here we will type category and set category after that in this div where we have the class name side link we will add the on click property so let's select all these div with the class name side link and here we will add on click property and in this one we will pass add a function and here we will call the set category function and in this one we will pass the value 0 so we have passed the category 0 now we will come back to the browser and here we will open video category then click on list then click on this link list and then click on execute button i will select this account allow the permission now here you can see we have one response where we have one array and in this array we have multiple objects so here you can see the id is one and the title is film and animation here we have the id2 that is for autos and vehicles here we have so here we have different id for different categories this is for music this is for pet and animals so now let's come back to the vs code editor and here we have to set the id for this home we will set zero for this gaming we have find the id from this response id number 20 that is for the gaming you can see the title gaming so we will provide this id here 20 similarly for this automobiles we will use id number 2 after that in this sports category we will set the id 17 this will be 24 for the entertainment for technology it will be 28 category id for the music category id will be 10 for blogs it will be 22 and for news it will be 25 so here we have provided the different id for different category after that we will convert this class name in dynamic class name for that here we will add the curly braces and we will convert it in the backticks after that here we will add the template literal so let's add dollar sign curly braces and here we will check if our category is zero in that case here we will provide one class name so here we will check if our category is zero in that case we will add a class name that is active and if the category is not zero in that case after this colon we will add empty string so if the category is zero in this class name it will add one more class name active now just copy this and paste it in other class name also 
remove it and paste it that we have added in the previous div. Here we will check the category is 20. Then it will add the active class name in this div, second div. Similarly, we will update it in the third div and update the category to that we have provided here. In the next one, we will add category 17. Similarly, in the next one, we will add the category 24. In the next one, we will add the category 28. Then in the next one, we will add the category 10. In the next one, let's add the category 22. And in the last one, we will add the category 25. After that, we will add the CSS properties for this active class name. So we will copy this class name and we will open sidebar.css file. Here we will add dot side link and with this one, if it contains the active class name also, then for this img tag, we will add the CSS properties. So here we will simply provide padding bottom and border bottom. Then save the changes and we will come back to the web page. So here we are on the home page. So here you can see one underline in the home icon. If I click on this gaming, now this border bottom is at the gaming icon. So now we can highlight which category is active right now. If I collapse this sidebar, still you can see this bottom line below the icon. Now our sidebar is ready. Let's close this file. And now we will come back to the feed.jsx file. And here first we will destructure the category prop. After that here we will add the logic using that we can fetch the home page data from this api for this home page we need the video list to get the video list we will come to videos section and here we will click on list after that we'll click on this list most popular videos After that, in this charts, we will select most popular and here scroll down in this video category ID, we will provide the ID zero. You can select the reason code. I am selecting US and in this max result, I will add 50 so that we will get the 50 videos detail. After that, we will click on this show code and then click on this HTTP. After selecting it, here we will get one link. Just copy this link. After copying this link, we will come back to the VS Code editor. And here we will create one function and the function name will be fetch data. So let's add const fetch data equal to async arrow function. After that, in this function, we will create one variable. So here we will add const video list URL equal to and here we will use backtick. After that, we will paste the link that we have copied. And here Remove this HTTP 1.1. So this is our URL. And in this URL, we have added the video category ID 0. We have manually added it. But we will get this ID from this category props. For that, we will update this, remove this 0 
and here we will use template literal so we will insert dollar sign curly braces and in this one we will provide the category prop similarly in this key we have to provide the api key so remove it and here we will use dollar sign curly braces and in this one we will use our api key that we have stored in this data.js file so we will use this api key in this feed.jsx file for that we have to import that api key so we will add import curly braces and here we will type api key so we have imported the api key from data file and we will add key equal to api key so we have created the url for fetching the video list now we will use the fetch api so we will add await fetch and in this fetch we will provide the video list url after that we will create the state variable to store the data that will be coming from the api link so here we will create one state variable just add const data and setter function name is set data equal to user state now initialize this variable we will initialize it with empty array so we have created one state variable data and the type is one array after running this fetch we will get one response to check the response here we will click on this execute button and select the account and allow the permission so here we will get the response like this where we will get the array and in this array we have multiple objects all object contains the data for a video card as you can see here we have the published ad it will display the time when the video is uploaded this is the channel id here we have the video title after that we have the description then we have thumbnails after that we have the channel title category id and some other details like view counts like counts so we will use these details to use these details we will save this array in our data state so let's come back so after this fetch statement here we will add dot then and in this then we will use response we will add response dot json after this response dot json we will get another promise so again we will use dot then in this then we will add data and from this data we will find this array and store it in our data state so we will add set data function and in this set data function we will provide data dot items so after adding this from our response data dot item property that is an array that will be stored in this state that is name as data now our fetch data function is ready now to run this function we will use use effect and in this one we will pass one arrow function and now i want this use effect to execute once when the function is loaded so here we will add comma and a square bracket in this function we will call fetch data so when we will load the component this use effect will be executed after that i want when the category id gets updated then also this fetch data will be executed so in that case in this bracket we will add category so when 
we will select the category in that case it will update the category id when the category will be updated it will update the category id and we will get the updated data from the api that will be stored in this data state now in our data state we have the data from the api now we will use this data to display the card on the web page so first here we have the multiple cards let's remove it we will add only one card so now we have only one card with link tag here we will use one curly braces and we will use data array that we are getting from the api on this one we will add the map method and in this map method we will add one arrow function in this arrow function we will pass individual item and index number after that we will use the return statement and in this return we will move this link tag then save the changes so here we have the same cards 50 time because in our data we have total 50 items after that we will find the thumbnails title from this data that is in the item array in this item we have the array and in this one we have the objects where we have the id this is the id then we have the category id so in this link to instead of 20 we will add template literal and in this one we will provide item dot snippet dot category id So here you can see in this snippet we have this category ID and we have used it in this link tag. Similarly a sheet of this video ID we will add the video ID from API. So here we will add dollar sign curly braces then we will provide item dot id that will be the video id now save the changes and we will open the web page now if i click on any thumbnail image it will open the video page on the url you can see the category id 24 and the video id now let's come back to the home page And here we have the image SRC. So here we will use the thumbnails that are coming from API. In this thumbnails, we have the medium URL. So here we will use item dot snippet dot thumbnails dot medium dot url after that save the changes and we will come back to the web browser so now you can see all the thumbnails has been updated these are coming from the api now we will display the video title from the api so we are getting the title in this snippet with the title property so remove this default text and here we will add curly braces then we will add item dot snippet dot title then save the changes and here we have the title for each videos 
After that, we have to update this channel data. So remove this text and here we will add curly braces. Then here we have to add the channel name. So in this response, you can see we have the channel name with the property channel title. So here we will type item dot a snippet dot channel title. Now save the changes and open our web page. Now you can see the channel name has been updated on our web page. You can see different channel name here, Mr. Waste, BBC, News 19. After that, we will update the view count and the time when the video is uploaded. So let's remove it. And here we will add the curly braces. So video views data is available here in this a statistics property and view count. So let's add it here item dot a statistics dot view count. Then save the changes. So you can see it is displaying number of views. But this view is displaying in complete number, but we want it in the thousand and million. So to convert it, we will build one converter. So in this data.js file, we will create one arrow function that will take the views data and convert it into the thousand and million. For that, we will add const value converter equal to arrow function and in this parameter we will add the value then here we will add if statement in this one we will check if our value is greater than 1 million so we will type value is greater than equal to 1 million In that case, we will return value divided by 1 million. After dividing, we will get the value in decimal. To remove the decimal digit, we will use math.floor. So we will add math.floor method. After that, from this data, decimal points will be removed. After that, we will concat the string that will be m. That means million. After that, if the value is less than this 1 million, in that case, we will add else if. And here we will check if our value is greater than equal to 1000 in that case we will return the same thing just copy and paste it here and here we will divide it by 1000 and instead of m we will add k that means 1000 if the value is less than 1000 in that case we will simply add else condition and return that data so we will return value our function is ready now now we will export this function and save this file and now we will come back to the feed.jsx file and here we have added view count so remove it and we will use value converter function and in this one we have to provide the value that is coming from the api so just paste that one after adding this let's come back to the web page now you can see we have the views in million and thousand format 
after that we have to display the time here when the video was uploaded so we will use the curly braces and here we will use this time from this api so here we have the published date that is in the snippet published at property so just add item dot snippet then dot published at and save the changes so here it is displaying the date and time but we have to convert it in the format like two days ago one days ago one hour ago so for that we will use the moment package so in this package json you can see moment that we have installed while installing the packages now we will use this package so let's remove this and here we will type moment and in this one just add this published at then we will add dot from now then save the changes now it is calculating the day from today's date and published date and displaying the value here like one day ago three day ago after that if i click on this gaming section you can see all the videos has been updated and it is displaying the content related to gaming similarly if i click on news now it is displaying the thumbnails and title related to news if i click on blogs you can see it is working fine all the categories are working if i go to music we have the music content if i come to technology we have the technology content if i come to entertainment we have the entertainment related videos then if i come to sports we have the sports related videos now this category functionality is successfully working if i click on any video thumbnail it will open the video page and on this page we have the data which is static data so we will update this data using this category id and video id using this video id we will display the correct video here and we will display the related comments and channel details and using this category id we will display the recommended videos in the sidebar so first we will add the video player functionality for that we will come to youtube.com and open any video here we have the video id and this video is playing here similarly using this video id we will play that particular video so let's right click on this video and click on copy embed code then close this and let's come back to our vs code editor let's open play video dot jsx file and remove this video tag or let's comment it and after that we will paste that embed code that we have copied from youtube so here we have the iframe in this one we have the width height src in this src we have the video id here we have the title and some other attributes so first let's remove this width height and remove this title also now what we have to do we will get the id from the parameter and place it here for that we will use use params for that let's come to video.jsx file 
and here we will type const curly braces we will type video id then category id we will get the video id and category id using use params so from the url video id and category id will be saved here now we will pass this video id and category id using props so in this play video component we will pass video id equal to curly braces video id then we will come here play video dot jsx file and here we will destructure that video id so we will add video id after that we can use this video id in this iframe src so remove this double quote and convert it into template literal first we will add the curly braces then backtick and here we will use template literal so let's add dollar sign curly braces and we will place the video id now save the changes after that we will come to home page and if i click on this video this particular video is added on this video page now i want this video to be auto play when we open this video page for that let's come back to the vs code editor and after this curly braces we will add question mark and here we will add auto play equal to 1 then save the changes and come back to the web browser now we have to set the home page on this logo image so that when we will click on this logo it will open the home page for that let's come back and come to navbar.jsx file we will wrap this image tag using link tag so just add link move this image in this link tag and here we will add two property and we will provide the path slash save the changes and we will come back to the web browser and if i click on the logo it will open the home page now if i open any other video that video is added here on this video page and it is automatically playing let's open another video you can see another video is added here now we will add the css properties for this iframe right now it is displaying very small so just come back and open this play video dot css file and convert this video tag in the iframe after that here we will define the height that will be 37 vw then save the changes and come back to the web browser now our video size is perfect if i click here it will start playing the video and if i click again it will pause the video let's go to home page let's open another video you can see another video is playing here after that we have to update these data that is video title views and upload time using the api data so first we will open this file play video dot jsx here we will create one use state variable so let's add const api data set api data equal to user state and initialize it with null after that we will create one function using that 
we can find the title description views time and the like data using this video id so here we'll add one add a function and the function name will be fetch video data so let's add const and write the function name fetch video data equal to and this will be one async add a function here we will add one comment fetching videos data after that we will create one url where we will pass the video id and using that video id we will get the data so here let's open this web page and click on videos then list and here we have the list by video id let's click here after clicking here we will click on show code click on http and copy this url here we will create one variable so we will type const video details url equal to and here we will insert the backtick and paste that url after that instead of this id we will use the template literal so just add dollar sign curly braces and here we will use the video id so just paste it here video id after that in this key we will use the api key that we have stored in this data.js file so remove this and here we will insert dollar sign curly braces and here we will provide api key after that our url is ready next we will use the fetch api so let's add await fetch and in this fetch we have to use the video details url after that we will get one response so let's see the response what we are getting let's click on this execute select the email id and allow the permission so here in this response in the item property we will get one array in this array we have one object and in this object we have video id published date channel id video title video description then thumbnails after that we have the tags channel name then we have view count like count and comment count so we will use these data and display it on our youtube clone video page we will save this response data in our api data so after this fetch we will add dot then in this one we will get a response so just add response and for this response we will add response dot json after that we will get another promise so let's add then method and here we will get the parse data so let's add data and from this data we will find the add a that is in this item property and in this array we have the object so we will store this object in our api data state so here we will type set api data and in this one we will provide data dot items and here we will provide the index 0 so it will 
provide this object in the API data state. After that, we will run this function. For that, we will use use effect. So let's type use effect. In this one, we will pass one add a function. And here we will provide square bracket so that this function will be executed only once when the component is rendered. So here we will call that function fetch video data. Then the function will be executed and the data coming from the API will be stored in this API data state. Now we will use this data to display the video title. So remove this hard coded title text and here we will provide curly braces. And in this object, we have a snippet and in this snippet, we have title property. So first we will check if our API data is available. In that case, we will type API data dot snippet dot title. If it is not available in that case, here we will add one text title here. Then save the changes and we will come back to the web browser. Now, if I go to home page, open this video. So you can see the title I spent seven days. So let's open it. And here we have the title I spent seven days. So now we'll display the number of views and time from the API data. So here we have the number of views, remove it. And here we will add the curly braces. Here we will check if our API data is available. So in that case, we will display the value from this view count that is in the statistics property. So let's add API data dot statistics dot view count. After that, if the API data is not available in that case, here we will add the value 16 K and save the changes. Here we will add S a statistics, save the changes. Now here you can see the view data is coming from the YouTube API. Now we will convert it in the million or thousand value using the converter function. So here we will add value converter. And in this one, we will paste this data. Now you can see the views in million. It is 64 million. Next, we will display the time. So here we have added the manual time two days. So remove it and here we will add moment. And in this moment, we will provide the API data dot snippet dot published at. And after that, we will add dot from now. And here we will import moment from moment. To run this moment, we will wrap it in the curly braces. After that, save the changes and open the web page. So here we have the three days ago that is coming from the API. So here we have used the moment and published date from now. Here also first we will check if this API data is available. In that case, we will display this date and if this api data is not available in that case we'll display one empty string save the changes and open any video so here we have the views and 
upload time. After that, we will update the like data here. So here we have 125, remove it. And here we will use curly braces. Then in this one, first we will check for the API data if it is available in that case we will add api data dot statistics dot like count and if this api data is not available so in that case we will add colon and let's display 155 now save the changes and we will come back to the web browser so here we have the like data. Now we have to convert this using the value converter function. So let's select this and we will wrap it and we will pass it in the value converter function. Save the changes. Now we have the 3 million likes that is coming from the API. We are not getting any dislike data from the API. In that case, let's remove this too. After that, in this snippet, we have the description that is the video description. So remove this hard coded description. And here we will add one paragraph tag. In this one, we will use the curly braces. And here we will check if our API data is available, in that case, we will use API data dot snippet dot description. After that, we will add colon. If the API data is not available, in that case, we will show one a string where it will display description here. Save the changes and we will come back to the web browser. So here we have the description. This description is too long. So we will make it a small. For that, here we will use the slice method. And here we will provide 0 and 250. Then save the changes. Now this description is small. After that, we have to update this number of comment. So it is here in this comment count value. So here, remove this manual value and we will add curly braces and we will check for the API data. If it is available, in that case, we will add API data dot statistics dot comment count and if the API data is not available in that case we will display 102 save the changes and here it is displaying number of comments we can convert this one also in thousand or million using the value converter so let's add it in the value converter function and save the changes now it is displaying 59k comments after that we have to update the channel name so it is available in this data in this channel title so let's come back and in this p tag remove this text and we will add curly braces and here we will check API data and if the API data is available in that case we will use API data dot snippet dot channel title if the API data is not available in that case after this colon we will provide one empty string then save the changes so here we have the channel name. So right now we have these information from this API that is title, views, 
टाइम लाइक्स चैनल नेम डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड कमेंट काउंट नाउ अदर डिटेल्स लाइक नंबर ऑफ सब्सक्राइबर्स चैनल लोगो वी हैव टू यूज अनदर ए पी आई लिंक सो विल गो टू चैनल्स देन क्लिक ऑन लिस्ट एंड हेयर वी विल ओपन लिस्ट वाई चैनल आई डी देन हेयर वी विल ओपन सो कोड एंड हेयर वी विल ओपन एच टी टी पी एंड कॉपी दिस यू आर एल आफ्टर दैट वी विल कम बैक टू दी बी एस कोड एडिटर एंड हेयर वी विल क्रिएट वन स्टेट एंड द स्टेट नेम विल बी चैनल डेटा एंड द सेटर फंक्शन नेम विल बी सेट चैनल डेटा इक्वल टू यूज स्टेट and we will initialize it with null after that we will create one add a function and the function name will be fetch other data so let's add const fetch other data equal to and here we will create one async add a function so just add async add a function and in this one we will add one comment fetching channel data after that we will construct one url so let's add const channel data url equal to and here we will use backtick and we will paste the url that we have copied now in this id we have to provide the channel id to provide the channel id we will use the api data so remove it and here we will use template literal so let's add dollar sign curly braces and to get the channel id of this video we will add api data dot snippet dot channel id after that in this key we will use our api key so we will add dollar sign curly braces and here we will provide the api key now we have constructed this url after that we will use the fetch api so we will type await fetch in this one we will use channel data url after that we will get one response so let's see which type of response we will get let's click on this execute button select the account and allow the permission so we will get this type of response where in the items property we will get one array and in this array we have one object in that object we have the channel name channel description channel custom url channel creation date and here we have the channel logo so we will use this url to display the channel logo in our youtube clone page and here we have the country details and here we have the subscriber count view count and video count so we will use the subscriber count so first we will save this response data in our channel data state so let's add dot then and we will get the response so we will parse the response using json method then again we will get promise so we will use then and in this one we will get the parse data that we will store in our channel data state so let's add set channel data and in this one we will 
pass the data dot items and in this items we will provide the index number zero so we will get the object which is here so this object will be saved in the channel data here we have used the api data for getting the channel id so i want this fetch video data to be executed first so that we will get the channel id and after that it will execute this second function which is fetch other data for that here we will use one more use effect and in this one we will pass one arrow function and here we will add the bracket and in this one we will provide the api data so when the api data will be updated this use effect function will be executed and in this one we will call the fetch other data function so when this api data will be updated then only this function will be executed after that in this channel data we will get the data about the channel information so we will use that data to display the channel logo and subscriber so here in this src remove this image and here we will use channel data first we will check if the channel data is available in that case we will add channel data dot snippet dot thumbnail dot default dot url if the channel data is not available in that case here we will simply provide empty string if the channel data is available in that case we will get the channel logo url from the api and if it is not available in this src we will use empty string save the changes and we will open the web page so you can see the channel logo here after that we have to update the subscriber count to display the subscriber count remove it that is 1 million and here we will add curly braces and first we will check channel data is available or not so if it is available in that case we will add channel data dot statistics dot subscriber count and if the channel data is not available in that case here we will provide one string that is 1m save the changes and we will come back to the web browser so here it is displaying number of subscribers in the complete number format so we will convert it using the value converter so let's cut this one and we will use value converter function and pass that value that is subscriber count save the changes now you can see 225 million subscribers so using the channel data we have displayed the logo and number of subscriber after that we have to display the real comments from the api so to get the comment data let's open this page we'll click on comment threads click on list and we'll select list by video id then click on show code then click on http and copy this url after that we will come to vs code editor and here we will add one comment fetching comment data and here we will create one url that is const comment url equal to backtick and in this one we will paste the url that we have copied 
after that in this url we have to provide the video id so we will use the dollar sign curly braces and we will provide the video id just add video id that we have received using props and in this key we will provide the api key so just add dollar sign curly braces and here we will use api key now we have constructed the url after that we will use the fetch api so we will use await fetch and in this one we will provide the comment url here we have to select the max result 50 uncheck this one and click on execute so we will get the response items and in this items we have the array and in this array we have multiple objects and each object has one comment and the username of the person who has commented and the profile image of that user so we will use these data to display the real comments on this video for that let's come back and uh, open this code file we will store this data in one state variable so let's create one state variable const and the name will be comment data and the setter function name will be set comment data equal to use state and we will initialize it with one array after that here we will add dot then so we will pass this response using the json method so we will add response dot json now again we will get one promise where we will get the parse data so let's add dot then data and we will store this parse data in our a state variable that is comment data so we will use the setter function set comment data in this one we will add data dot items now this comment data will be stored here in this state variable after that here we have the multiple comments so let's delete other comments we will keep only one comment So let's remove these comments. Here we have only one comment. Save the changes. On this video page, we have only one comment. Now we will use this comment format to display all the comments. So first, let's add a space here and here we will add curly braces. Let's add comment data dot map method. In this one, we will pass one arrow function here we will add the individual item and we'll add the index after that we will return and in this return we will place this comment format so place it here in this return after that in this div we will add the key property in this one we will provide the index after that we will save the changes and we will come back to the web browser so here we have the multiple comments so it is around 20 comments now we will use this item data to display the real comments so first let's open this response and in this one we have snippet and in this snippet we have top level comment in this top level comments we have another snippet and 
there we have author profile image url so we will use this url to display these images so let's come back and in this image tag remove this user profile and here we will add item dot a snippet dot top level comment dot a snippet dot author profile image url now save the changes now come back to the web browser now here it is displaying different users image who has commented on this video after that we will display the user's name so let's see this response data here we have author display name so we will use this one so here we will add curly braces in this one we will add item dot a snippet dot top level comment dot a snippet and after that we will use author display name now save the changes now come back to the web browser so here it is displaying the username of each users who has commented on this video now we will display the real comment so we are getting the comment data in this text display where we have the comment so using this we can display the comment on our youtube clone so remove this text from this p tag and here we will use the curly braces in this one we will add the item dot snippet dot top level comment dot a snippet dot text display after that save the changes and now we will open the web browser so here we have comment of each users after that we will display the like data for this comment so in this api you can see we are getting the response like count so we will use this like count to display the number of likes so in this hard coded data let's remove it and here we will add the data from the api so let's add item dot a snippet dot top level comment dot a snippet dot like count then save the changes and here it is displaying updated like data that is coming from the api now here also we will use the value converter function so that it will be displayed in the thousand and million format so here we will use value converter and we will add it inside this bracket now save the changes now these comments are displaying in the thousand format so right now here it is displaying 20 comments if you want to display more comments in this comment url you can update the value so let's add and max result is equal to 50 like this after that save the changes and come back to the web browser now it will display total 50 comments now we have created the play video component where we have the video then we have the video related details then we have the video related comments after that we have to create the recommended section where we will display the videos related to the main video which is playing on this web page 
For that, we will come back to the VS Code editor and we will open video.jsx file. Here we have the category ID that we have fetched from the URL. So we will pass this category ID in this recommended component using props. So let's add category ID equal to category ID. After that, we will open this recommended.jsx file. And here, first we will destructure that category ID. So let's add curly braces and we will add category ID. After that, we will use this category ID and we will fetch the video related to the category ID and we will display it in this recommended section. For that, first we will create one state variable where we will store the data that will be coming from the API. So let's add const and the state variable name will be API data and the function name will be set API data. After that, here we will add equal to use state and we will initialize it with empty array. After that, we will create one arrow function where we will use the fetch API. So let's add const fetch data equal to async arrow function. And here we will construct the URL. To construct the API URL, we will add const and we will add the name related video URL equal to and here we will use the backticks. In this one, we have to provide the URL. So let's come back to the browser and close this one and we will click on this video section. In this videos, we will click on list. Then click on this list most popular videos. After clicking here, in this field, we have the video category ID. In this one, we will pass zero. Then click on show code. And here we will click on HTTP. And from here, we will copy this URL. After that, we will paste this URL in this backtick. And in this API key, we will use our API key. So let's add dollar sign curly braces and we will provide the API key. After that, here we have the video category ID. So in this video category ID, we will provide the category ID from this category ID that we have received using props. So remove this zero and we'll add template literal. So just add dollar sign curly braces and just add category ID. Now we have constructed the URL. After that, we will use the fetch API. So let's add await fetch. In this one, we will provide the URL that is related video URL. Then we will get one promise. So we will use then method and we will get the response data. So we have to parse that response data using JSON method. So let's add response and we will add response.json so it will return another promise so we can use then method again and in this then method we will get the parse data and we will store that parse data in the a state variable that is api data so first let's check in which format we are getting the data so let's execute this then allow 
and you can see this data is coming in the items property in this array. So we will store this array in this API data. So let's add the setter function, set API data. In this one, we will provide data dot items. So we have implemented the fetch API. Now to call this function, we will use use effect. So let's add use effect. In this one, we will pass one add a function. Now I want this function to be executed when this component is rendered first time. So let's add the square bracket and here we will call that function fetch data. Now this API data will store the multiple videos data and we will display that in the sidebar. So we will remove other recommended videos. We will keep only first one. So here we have multiple video list. Let's remove other video list and we will keep only first one. Here we have only first video that is displaying in the sidebar. Using this format, we will display the data from the API that is stored in the API data. In this div, we will add the curly braces and here we will add API data dot map method. In this one, we will pass one add a function. And here we will add individual items and index number. Then we will use return and in this return, we will return this format. So place this HTML elements here. After that, in this tip, we will add the key property and we will pass index. Now save the changes. So here you can see. In this result, we have five data. Now, if you want to display more data, then let's come back. In this URL, we will add and max result is equal to 45. Now save the changes. Now in the right side, you can see total 45 recommended videos will be displayed. Right now it is displaying all same images and title. So using this API data, we will update these thumbnails and video details like video title, channel details and views. So first we will display the thumbnails. So remove this thumbnail and we will open this API data in this response. You can see in this snippet, we have thumbnails and here we have the medium and URL. So we will use this medium URL to display the thumbnail. So in this one, we will type item dot snippet dot thumbnails dot medium dot URL. Now save the changes and come back to the web page. So you can see here we have the updated video thumbnails that is coming from the API. After that, we will display this title. So here we have the title. So let's remove it. And here we will add the curly braces and we will get the title in this snippet in this title property. So let's add item dot a snippet dot title. Now save the changes and we will open the web page. Now here all the titles has been updated. After that, we have to display the channel name. 
So here we have the channel name in this response data with the property channel title. So let's add curly braces. We will use item dot a snippet dot channel title. Save the changes. Now it is displaying the updated channel name for this video list. After that, we have to display the views count. So views data is available here in this statistics view count property. So we will use it to display the number of views in the recommended section. So let's come back and here remove this manual value and we will use the curly braces item dot statistics dot view count and save the changes. And now you can see here we have the updated view count. Here also we will use the value converter. So let's add value converter and wrap it in the bracket. Now we have to import this value converter. So let's add import value converter. After adding this, let's remove these imported thumbnails. We don't want this. Save the changes. Now you can see it is displaying the view count in millions. Now if I click here, this video is not playing. So next we have to add the functionality that when we click on any video from the recommended list, that video should be displayed on this video page. And the video details will be displayed below the video. For that, we will use the category ID and video ID. So let's convert this div tag in the link tag. After that, this react router DOM will be imported. After that, here we will add two property. In this one, we will use template literal. So we will add backtick and we will add slash video slash and we will provide the category ID. So we are getting the category ID in this snippet in the category ID property. So we will add dollar sign curly braces. We will add item dot snippet dot category ID. After that, we will provide one slash. And after that, we will add video ID. So we are getting the video ID directly in this object with the ID property. So let's add dollar sign curly braces item dot id that's it after that save the changes and we will come back to the web browser and now if i click on any video in the recommended section that video will be played on this video page but here we don't have that particular video detail so what we have to do we have to display the video detail from this particular video for that, let's come back to the play video dot JSX file. Here we have the video ID, remove it. And we will take this video ID from the params instead of props. So let's add const video ID equal to use params. After that, we will provide this video ID here. So that when the video ID will be updated, this fetch video data will be executed when this will be executed this will update the api data and when the api data will be updated 
it will call another function which is fetch other data. Now save the changes and we will come back to the web browser. Now let's go to home page, open this video. So this video is playing here. Now from this recommended section, let's open another video. That video is playing here and here we have the updated video details. So now we have created all the functionality in this YouTube clone where we can change the content based on the video category and we can collapse and expand the sidebar. Then we can open the video by clicking on the thumbnail that video will be automatically played. After making all these features, next we have to make this project responsive for a smaller screen devices. Right now if I inspect this web page and change the screen size, you can see it is not responsive. So we have to make it responsive using the CSS media queries. So let's come back to the VS code editor and here we will open the navbar.css file. Here we will add the media queries. So we will type media and here we will provide the max width. Let's add 900 pixel. Here we will add dot menu icon and for this menu icon we will add display none so that it will be hidden for a small screen. After that we will add dot nav right and img and here also we will provide display none so that it will hide all the icons that is in the right side. So if I reduce the width under 900 pixels so you can see these icons are hidden. Now we have to display the profile icon that was added in the navbar. So here we will add dot navwrite dot user icon and for this one we will provide display block so that our image will be visible. Then we will add the width of 30 pixel. Save the changes and you can see this user profile icon is visible for small screen. After that we will reduce the width of this logo. For that here we will add the class name dot logo and we will provide the width. It will be 90 pixel. Now the logo size has been reduced for this small screen. After that we have to add the CSS properties for this input field. So let's add dot nav middle dot search box input field and here we will provide the width that will be 100 pixel then save the changes and here you can see the search box is small. After that let's come back and open sidebar.css file and here we will add the media queries so we will type media and max width 900 pixel. And here we will provide the class name dot sidebar. And here we will add display none so that the sidebar will be hidden in a smaller screen. Let's click here to open the mobile view. You can see the sidebar has been removed. But here we have lots of a space in the left side. So to fix this one. Let's come back and we will open this file home.css. Here also we will add the media queries. So let's add media max width 900. And here we will add the class name dot large container and one more class name dot container. For both class name we will add the property that is padding left and padding right that will be 5%. So it will be equal and small space from the left and right side. So let's open the web page. You can see this home page is looking perfect in a small screen.
Now, if I open any video, it will open the video page. So this is the video page and now we have to make this page responsive for a small screen. So let's open the video.css file and here we will add media. We will provide the max width and it will be 900 pixel. Here we will use dot play container and for this one we will add the padding from the left side 5% and padding from the right side it will be 5%. Save the changes. Now here we have the padding of 5% from left and right side. After that we will come back to the VS code editor and open playvideo.css file. Scroll down and we will provide the media query here. So let's add media max width and it will be 900 pixel. So for this page we will provide play video class name and we will provide the CSS properties flex basis 100%. Then we will add the class name play video then iframe element. So for this iframe let's provide width it will be 100% and we will provide the height of 50 VW. After that here we will provide dot width description and we will provide the padding from the left side that will be 0. Then we will provide the class name play video dot play video info then a span tag and here we will use margin from the left side 0 then margin right 15 pixel and margin from the top 15 pixel so here we have added the css properties for play video component then we will open recommended.css file and here we will add the media queries so let's add media then max width it will be 900 pixel and here we will provide the recommended class name for this one we will provide the css properties flex basis 100% so it will also use 100% space in a small screen now open the web page and this video is playing here and this page is completely responsive. If I reduce the screen size, you can see it looks perfect in a smaller screen. If I scroll this web page, you can see it is looking great. If I open the home page, it is also looking good. So now we have made our project completely responsive and we have created this YouTube clone project using React.js. I hope this video will be helpful for you. If you have any question, you can ask me in the comment section. Please like and share this video and also subscribe my channel Greatest Act to watch more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching this video.